Hello, my name's Flick and I'm taking you inside Picture House. This month's show comes to you from the small and splendid Gate Cinema in London's Notting Hill. The Gate, or as it was then known, the Electric Palace, opened its doors on the 15th of April 1911. The auditorium was and still is a riot of Edwardian plasterwork with a proscenium arch under which the film was screened directly onto the wall. In 1931, it was one of the first British cinemas to convert fully to sound and unfortunately it lost its beautiful dome and roof during the Second World War. During the 70s, it functioned as a cinema club and was able to swerve strict censorship laws and was one of the first cinemas to show the notorious Aino Corrida. In 2003, Picture House took over, refurbing with luxury seating and restoring the ornate plasterwork. I'm Alex Humphrey, uh, I'm the assistant manager here uh, at The Gate um, and I've worked here four years now. We show a lot of art house stuff here, a lot of American independent stuff. Films that have got kind of a really good calibre of director and some really good reviews behind them. We've had some really good events that we had Woody Harrelson here for Lost in London. It's great being kind of in the centre of London, being able to get these people here and uh, you know in such a beautiful space, such a beautiful auditorium with such a great history really. Custody is the first Picture House entertainment release of 2018 and is the directorial feature debut from Xavier Legrand. I don't know which one of the two who mentions the most, for example. Winner of the Silver Lion at Venice, the film is quickly gaining universal acclaim as a political and social comment as well as a brilliantly paced psychological thriller. I want to just take the news of my children. We were first introduced to the family in the film through Legrand's Oscar-nominated short, Just Before Losing Everything. And it opens in a court scene where custody of 11-year-old Julian is being decided. Thomas Gioria gives an astonishing performance as a boy coping with the extremely intense complexities of his situation. <laughs> I sat down with actor Denis Menuchet to discuss the film and his role as Julien's father, Antoine. There's a term in France called pervert narcissistics. I worked on obsessions and trying to use masks to get what you want. And it's just this uh, psychotic attitude, like a beast who has to pretend that he knows human behaviors and everything, but at the same time being a father and not forgetting that, that is a very key and important thing. We really see Antoine when he is alone with his son. Were you at all conflicted about playing such a character with such a young boy? Yes, I was. At, at first I got really concerned about who was going to be the actor in front of me. So I, I, I kind of uh, overdid it as a, ah, you're going to be my friend. We're going to, you know, I bought like this small ball and I was trying to give my line, throw, it, throw the ball, he'd give his line and I could, put violence in a game so he could understand it. He didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was all method for no reason. He was like, come on, man, let's, let's do the scene. But he inhabited that role. That's like his crazy. body language was astonishing. Yeah, like the first day of shooting, we were shooting a scene in a car. The camera was on, on my character and he was off camera and still crying every take. And at first I got thrown by it, I was like, oh, we're messing this kid up. And he was just acting. And he was on cut, he was laughing, and he was already like, you know, super um, happy to be here. It was, in, yeah, mind blowing. I was really struck by the sound design of the film. You could almost hear the static of the universe when Antoine actually gets into the apartment. It was written as such in the script, especially in the car, all those sounds. When you read the script, you could tell already that the sounds were like, kind of a, a little prison thing, like uh, the doors, you see all the doors and the gates, and all those sounds were like closing up on her. Funny Cow is directed by Adrian Shergold, 
Pierre Point and stars Maxine Peake as a female comic determined to perform despite the male-dominated lineups of working men's clubs during the 70s and 80s. This is an unsentimental commentary of a particularly bleak period for sexism and racism, very much reflected in comedy of the time. When I was a kid, I was funny. And I thought, that's what I'll do. It'll be my job to make them laugh. Peak pulls off a tour de force performance, capturing the phenomenally difficult acting task of live, natural stand-up comedy. John Bishop plays an Elvis impersonator, and Jim Moyer, a.k.a. Vic Reeves, plays a ventriloquist. Richard Hawley provides a wistful score, as well as a cameo, with Corin Bailey Ray as Riley Monica Duo, Coffee and Cream. Happiness comes and goes, so give yourself a chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ghost Stories is written and directed by the extraordinary Andy Nyman, actor, author, magician and Darren Brown's psychological illusionist and Jeremy Dyson, author, musician, screenwriter and League of Gentlemen member. Adapted from their very successful stage play of the same name, the film is based very much in old-school black-and-white British horror. Nyman plays Professor Philip Goodman, a famous debunker of the supernatural, who is challenged to investigate and rationally explain three puzzling, spine-chilling stories. Martin Freeman and Paul Whitehouse also star. The brain sees what it wants to see. From director Mike Newell, Four Weddings and a Funeral, comes a drama set in the aftermath of World War II. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society is adapted from the best-selling novel of the same name. Well, my first book sold only how many copies? 28. Worldwide. <laughs> Starring Lily James, Downton Abbey, as an unsuccessful yet charismatic author, Juliet Ashton, who receives an invitation from one Dorsey Adams, a Guernsey farmer and society member. Intrigued, she travels to Guernsey with every intention of writing up her findings to find an island still in trauma and characters who did what they could to survive. A wonderful cast including Tom Courtney and Penelope Wilton. You've yet to have the full experience. Potato peel pie. <coughs> <laughs> the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Crikey, that's quite a mouthful. On Wednesday the 11th, something wicked this way comes in the RSC's thrillingly dark and modern new production of Macbeth. Returning home from battle, the victorious Macbeth meets three witches on the heath. Driven by their disturbing prophecies, he sets out on the path to murder. Directed by Polly Findlay, this production of Shakespeare's darkest psychological thriller marks both Christopher Eccleston's RSC debut and the return of Neve Cusack to the company. And now April's news, screenings, seasons and events throughout the month. In celebration of the release of Spielberg's Ready Player One, Picture House's Culture Shock Strand presents a season throughout the month of the retro sci-fi classics referenced in Ernest Cline's pop culture odyssey. Akira, Back to the Future, Tron, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Iron Giant and Blade Runner. On Tuesday the 10th, Picture House's Discover Tuesday's Strand presents a preview of Mary and the Witch's Flower, the highly anticipated first feature from Studio Panok, founded by Ghibli producer Yoshiaki Nishimura. Who is my voice? On Thursday the 12th, recorded at Copenhagen's Royal Arena in October 2017, Distant Sky captures an extraordinary concert from Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. 
performing new album Skeleton Trees, exquisite compositions alongside their essential catalogue, the band's first show in three years provoked an ecstatic response in fans, critics and band alike, renewing a profound and intimate relationship wherever they played. Throughout April, Vintage Sundays presents an Ingmar Bergman season to celebrate the great Swedish auteur's centenary, featuring classics such as The Seventh Seal and rediscoveries such as 1972's Touch. Mid-April sees the official launch of the Sundance Film Festival London. Picture houses are delighted to be bringing the best of the Utah Sundance Film Festival to London over a three-day feast of films, parties, events and superstar talent from the independent film world. Sundance London is the place to be from the 31st of May to the 2nd of June, taking place at Picture House Central. Buy your pass now! That's it for April. Remember to keep up to date at our website, picturehouses.com. And of course, you can book tickets on the go with our handy Picture Houses app. Become a member of Picture House Cinemas to get free tickets, discounts, and loads of perks and benefits. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again in May from Picture House Central.